those people that specifically go to a podiatrist to seek treatment for their onychomycosis, only 4.5% um, are actually receiving a prescription for an oral antifungal because, frankly, the patients are afraid of it. I think it's a fairly safe drug, but the patients just don't want it. They're on other uh, concomitant medications, and they just don't want to take the chance of liver pathology which means over 95% of the patients that come to the podiatrist's office and are offered an oral antifungal will reject, will reject that option. So they've taken the time and the energy to get in their car and drive to your office and sit down and go through an appointment and hear about all the options. And most of them leave dif disappointed because they've already tried the over-the-counters. They don't have any confidence in the um, topicals. And after you explain the story to them about the orals, they, they leave in frustration. They resign themselves to um, quarterly debridements for the rest of their life. So there's clearly a place for another treatment. Also with the orals, um, the best literature we, we have shows a 35% recurrence within the first two years. So again, um, maintenance really, not cures, is the, is the modality. And so I would say that we really have a treatment uh, paradigm change where onychomycosis is viewed as a chronic condition, and so treatment should be focused on reducing the thickness and improving the appearance of the nail. Because what the literature has shown us over and over again is that cures are transient. If you actually go out to five years, uh, the recurrence of onychomycosis, I saw one paper that reported as high as 90%. So here we go, we're going to talk about the laser. Why laser? Well, safety for one. No liver function or drug interaction issues for anybody. Minimal complaints of transient pain. It's more of a slight warmth. It's easy to use. It's done right in the office. Relatively rapid to administer, and it penetrates the entire nail. It goes from top to bottom. And so the big question then is, is it, is it effective? That's really the question. Now, it's interesting when you, when you um, talk to people about lasers. Um, they tend to lump them together. So all um, ND AG lasers are the same, all you know, bi-wavelength lasers are the same, and it's absolutely not true. Um, if, if that were the case, there would only be one laser company, and there's not. So each company has specific wavelengths that they recommend. More importantly than that, energy density. And so this is an important point when you're considering the pinpoint devices, um, the, the size of that spot dramatically affects the energy density when you're using that. So um, large spot sizes hurt. A lot more energy being delivered to that, that uh, um, surface of that nail. Um, temporal parameters. So how frequently the, the pulse hits the nail is controlled by the device manufacturer. And you, you experience something called pulse stacking. And what pulse stacking is is you um, apply energy to the bed of the nail through the nail surface, and it takes a moment for that energy to dissipate, right? So if you do one pulse and you wait three minutes, the nail has had a chance to return to normal temperature. But if you pulse it over and over again, um, there's an optimum speed of pulsing, we call it a pulse train, where you maintain a certain level of optimum energy. And it's a temperature-based system, so you want it to be warm enough to um, kill the fungus but you don't want it to be warm enough to burn the patient. So these temporal parameters, um, which are always proprietary, are a critical difference. Even if you have two lasers that have the same wavelength, um, it's, the, it's this pulse train, this design of how the energy is delivered to the nail bed that makes a big difference. <coughs> the duration of treatment, how fast you can cover the nail. Um, tissue specific, so some lasers are more focused on color and others can work slightly outside of their color range. And then tissue penetration, it has to be energetic enough to get through those tissues. So just because two lasers use the same wavelength does not necessarily mean that they're equivalent. And so we have to think about this energy density, which is determined by the power of the laser, the duration, the spot size, and the pulse strain. The thing that I like about lasers is that it's a targeted treatment. It's not a systemic treatment. People sometimes come into our office with two pages of medications. It's nice to give them something that doesn't add to that list. It's site-specific. This is a laser that's made for toenails. This is, this is the only application. It's a dedicated device, and it's spectacular. 
It's easy to repeat, do catch-ups if you need to, and it's very safe. So there's all different types of laser therapies. Um, and, and here's a, a very short list of some of the technologies that are currently being used. I think the two that um, really have a place in the United States are photothermal ablation and this near-infrared photoinactivation. So the photothermal ablation is the NDEAG system, and um, it's been previously shown to, to kill all types of pigmented bacteria, and so now it's being used in uh, fungus. Now, the thing that I think is interesting about this is you can imagine lasering in your mouth would be an uncomfortable proposition, and so um, by correctly controlling the pulse, spot, the pulse train and the spot size, it's not a painful procedure. Um, rapid temperature increases are possible within that targeted tissue, and so you can disintegrate the material that you're focusing on. The near-infrared system is, is uh, the type that the uh, Novion system uses. Um, I think there's still a lot of controversy about how exactly it, it kills uh, the bacteria, and apparently um, the FDA felt the same way. So what are our laser options? So we have the pinpoint, which we're going to be talking about today the Qtera system, which we'll touch on briefly, um, the Nomir Novion system, which is a near-infrared photoinactivation system, and then the Cool Touch, which is, uh, um, uses mid-range infrared, so it's a much hotter type of laser, and so in order to counteract that, they have a cool breeze. They, they blow cool air on the surface of the nail to minimize the discomfort that they would otherwise have. So I'll start with the, uh, the Cool Touch. You can see it's a, a 1320 nanometer wavelength, this is what they call mid-infrared. And again, it's an energy absorbing system, so water in the tissue essentially percolates and kills the fungus. Um, so I check periodically because uh, I'm a, a nerdy, scholarly kind of guy, and um, there still have been no published studies um, for the treatment of onychomycosis with this device. But um, if you go to the web page, they also don't have any information because they're not cleared for the treatment of onychomycosis, but if you go to the um, British webpage, there's different regulations, and so um, I present to you the sum total of their data, um, these two nails, um, a before and after, and a before and after, and so you can see, you can see this uh, study on the uh, British webpage if you're interested. The Novion system, um, I did a lot of uh, their original clinical and I participated in their presentation to the FDA. Um, in, in our hands, it worked pretty well. Uh, there's a couple things that, that we had difficulties with. One is that you can only treat four uh, toenails at a time. So the thing that's positive about the, the device is um, you can clip these, these uh, modules onto the toes, and uh, the machine does its thing. You walk out of the room. It takes 16 minutes to run the cycle for four toes. So if they're going to be there um, in your office to have all 10 toes treated, then uh, you need to allow about 45 to 50 minutes to do those treatments. Um, as I said, it's a dual wavelength um, system, and uh, um, there are some uh, current peer-reviewed papers, including one that I wrote, that shows that it is effective against fungus. Now, we have one of these in our office. In fact, this was the first machine that we had in our office. And um, just some, some observations about it. The toe pods cost uh, about $30 per toe, and they're single use. Um, now, they recommend that you do four treatments um, per patient. So essentially, it's uh, 40 pods if you're going to treat all 10 toes, and uh, that $30 a, a pod, um, it's $1,200 to do that treatment. So. Um, starts becoming difficult to figure out how to how to make that work for your for your patients. Um, first study that uh, they had was a uh, um, small study, 15 subjects, uh, no adverse um, outcomes, and in, in this in this uh, particular study, 83% uh, showed clinical improvement. Now that falls short of that um, FDA requirement for um, a certain number of millimeters in a certain number of days, but there were 83 83%.